and a warning for Indigenous viewers, this story has historical images of people who have since died. Imagine being taken away from your family, being given a new name and a new religion. Until about 50 years ago, scenes like this actually happened across Australia. From around 1909 to 1970, the Australian government took up to 50,000 Indigenous kids and babies from their families and forced them to live with white Australians in foster homes, missions and orphanages. These kids are called the Stolen Generations and even today, some of them don't know their biological families. It happened because the European settlers thought taking Indigenous kids away from their families would help them blend in with non-Indigenous Australians. Many didn't realise what this would do to Indigenous communities. In the 1960s, people started campaigning for Aboriginal rights. Tonight, I'm not appearing as Jimmy Little the singer, but as Jimmy Little, a member of a very proud race, my people, the Aborigines, the first Australians. But it took about 10 years for the government to stop taking the Indigenous kids away. To teach people about the Stolen Generations, people wrote stories and songs. More people recognised that what happened to the Stolen Generations was wrong. But it wasn't until 2008 that Indigenous Australians got a proper apology from the Prime Minister. As Prime Minister of Australia, I am sorry. On behalf of the Government of Australia, I am sorry. On behalf of the Parliament of Australia, I am sorry. And I offer you this apology without qualification. One of the places the kids were taken to was the Carolup Mission. More or less we were taken there against our will. More or less you could put it down to be a stolen generation, as far as I'm concerned. Nolene's parents, Noel and Lily, ran the settlement. She says the Indigenous kids didn't like being made to go to school. They marched into the classroom, but Dad couldn't get a peep out of them. He couldn't get any results from them at all, couldn't get any response from them. She says her dad decided to take the children for a bushwalk, telling them to draw what they saw. He recognised that there was a tremendous talent there. And so before long, um, they were given a paper and and I'm talking about brown, brown paper, uh, school pads, and uh, there was no art paper or anything, and crayons, just cartons of crayons. And out came this, as you will see, some of the beautiful works that they produced. When the mission was closed down, it was thought that the paintings were lost forever. School closed overnight without any warning, and uh, so these artworks had gone back to England and we never thought another thing about them. Now, 60 years on, the children's paintings have been brought back to Australia from a university in New York. These are really a shining light from a very dark period in our history. It's so lovely to see this exhibition taking place and to see these works finally being recognised. The exhibitors say the paintings give an insight into Australian history. It's the resilience and the the energy um, that these children found um, through the inspired program of, of Noel White and his wife Lily, um, you know, has, has created an astonishing body of work that has repercussions, you know, through generations. A body of work which is now at home to be shared and to teach people for generations to come.